Welcome to my preview of Orb, which is an open world game that is exploration based and uh, you it's basically a treasure hunt where you kind of explore around this big open world and try to find these hidden geometrical objects and when you click them they'll uh, appear in your home here which is this is this is your home actually and uh, then they'll appear in your house and kind of combine to create this machine inside your house here so uh yeah i'm not much of a I'm, I'm definitely not a professional game developer by any means i just have been doing this for uh about 10 years and just messing around with unity just as an amateur having fun with it and uh just uh seeing what the possibilities can uh can allow for an amateur like me and like you maybe but uh yeah you know this is very this is not a, a tutorial on uh, how to build a game because i honestly don't know um this is a frankenstein of many different built-in packages in unity that you can download and uh add to your game and a lot of and pretty much all found 3d models so uh this world ha has has dunes here that have these animated um like wind kind of effects or color effects which is this micro splat dunes uh, package which is kind of a preset and what i did is i just kind of like duplicated these <laughs> very haphazardly around to create this huge map and I'm still working on figuring out the best way on how to transition between them because I've been I'm not really too sure I haven't really mastered that yet I'm not very good at this but um so that's a built-in package and then there's this azure daylight system um I'll show you and so you can download the azure sky which is like, a, and you can find any Unity package for free on unityfreeassets.com, I believe. And uh, yeah, so I just kind of, this is just a Frankenstein of a lot of different free packages, or a lot of them are, you have to pay for, but uh, you can just find them for, for free on unityfreeassets.com. So the, the Azure Sky thing, it, it, it kind of has a daylight and a neat nighttime sequence. And so it, as you see, the sun kind of moves. And so that's like, and the clouds as well, that's all built in. So I just kind of like mess with the parameters of that, that of those built in packages and uh, combined it with this uh, micro splat terrain. And as you can see, the sun is setting, the light is changing, it's getting dramatic. <laughs> And look at that. And that's, this is all built in. Uh, well, it's not built in Unity. You have to download these packages, but you can find them and uh, very easily and just kind of drop them into your scene and see how they work with your environment. So, uh, yeah, so th this is, um, you know, this is this is the world that I'm, that I'm building here. Um, you start here. And then here are some like oases that you can find that all have these uh, hidden objects in it. Um, like one of the closest ones here is this cave where it's pretty easy to see that this object here um, is, is one of those hidden objects, a special object that has um, so the script that somebody actually built for me, which is um, a script a JavaScript that you just drag and drop onto the object. And when you, when your mouse enters the object, it changes the material. And when it exits the object, it goes back to the regular material. And when you click down on mouse down, it plays this text that I have um, connected to the first person controller, which is a totally incorrect way of doing it. But um, again, this is not, don't use this as a tutorial. I'm just showing how I, the crazy ways that I do things. I have these texts that are uh, connected to the first person controller that populate when this is clicked. So when this is clicked, 
there will be a little text thing that appears of whatever I want. And when the mouse is up, when the click is done, it'll play an animation that'll move this thing to your home and, uh, and also play a sound. But here's what the animation looks like. So it does that when you click it and it eventually, you can follow it here. Um, eventually it, it ends up at your home pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm just pressing F to focus on the object here. So, so then now it lives where you begin and just kind of spins there, but everything that you get kind of like combines and uh, turns into this warp drive machine that'll transport you to other dimensions. And uh, yeah, so that is one example. So kind of what I wanted to do, uh, well, ultimately you're gonna be able to dress your interior with a lot of cool space age furniture that you can find around too. And when you click it, it'll populate in your house. Um, and you can buy it as well by um, doing things for people and uh, buying uh, just interior objects and whatever you want, weird little sculptures. But what I want to do is there's all these geometrical objects around the world. And I'm actually just beginning to put characters in this world in the same sense, a very crude way of kind of like non- uh, choose your own adventure, just kind of like a uh, poetic dialogue that, that happens when you find these characters. So what I want to do is I want to duplicate this. Um, I just call it discovery here. I'm going to duplicate it. And I am going to move it away to a new place. Um, I'm gonna turn this object into a character that you can talk to, essentially. Well, essentially, I, I don't know how to make, uh, allow you to talk to it, but it's going to talk to you. So I'm just gonna put it on the way to this city. So you kind of encounter this character that's somebody that, that's just waiting there out in the desert mysteriously. Somewhere there. So instead of this, uh, not geometry, I want to put a character there instead. So I have this character. Let's see if I can find it. It's very un unorganized. Um, so it's called EEOBJ. So I have this character already set which is like this linen fabric kind of thing. And uh, the collider is to, it makes it so that you can uh, click it actually, so that it also has mass. So it's huge right now, I'm gonna bring it down. And the collider didn't seem to work with it. So I'll, I'll do that again. So bringing it down, that looks maybe a little too small. I'm not sure. There's really no reference point. I'm just guessing here. So, okay. So I want to give it its own um, texture, which I've already made for it. This cloth thing. And uh, it's almost right. Let me see if this is correct. There we go. So it's like this texture that I made for out of a James McCarthy painting. So there's this thing, there's this being here. And what I want to do is when you click it, when you encounter this person, this thing, um, it starts talking to you and it starts moving and uh, it gives you a little quest and then it goes away. So that's kind of my goal here. Um, I have the other scripts um, changing the material when you hover over it, which might be cool, but ultimately when you hover over this, maybe I want to put like an ellipsis above it. So for now, I'm just going to, I'm just going to minus these and I want to replace the text 
of the previous text with the one that I made for this. And it's going to play the text, it's going to write the text, type the text. There we go. To do these things, I've just learned through trial and error. It's, somebody made this script for me. I have no idea how to script. I also don't know anything about node based anything. I do everything visually with no nodes. I have no idea what this stuff is. I'm sure you do if you use Unity a lot, but this is just how I use it. Um, so, okay, so what, what we want to do is make this kind of interactable here somehow. First, we got to add the new uh, mesh collider so that. You can click it, and that should fit to the size of the object automatically. And I want it to speak to us, which I've already made this audio that's different. So I, I'm just going to attach this audio here. And I will might as well make it play the audio, which is, yeah. But when I, when I rename this, it should update. Let's call it Discovery 5. Yeah, it updates these things automatically, so it'll play the audio when you click it. So now we want it to animate when we click it. So we open up this animation window here, make a new clip. I, I meant to call it cloth, but it's called cough now. I, I, that was an accident. Okay, so I'm gonna like start this animation just by like moving it a little bit. There we go. Got the animation of the position and the rotation ready. Is this even the right orientation? It looks good enough, I think. So when you click it, I kind of want this being to start just kind of rotating up and down. Oops. Okay, so kind of go up a little bit. How fast is that? A little too fast, but it kind of works. So I want it to go up and come down. And when it comes down, I want it to do a little twirl around. And when it goes up, I want it to do the same thing again. And do it again. Cool. So I'm animating uh, this to twirl and move. I don't know exactly how long I need it to. I forgot how long the audio is that I made for it and how long the text is. But I'm just going to guess here. So just kind of make it do different things. And when it comes back down, I'll have it start rotating to go off in uh, some other direction. And I'll uh, just kind of have it fly off here through this canyon. At the end of, this is kind of gonna be like when it stops when, it, when the dialogue ends, essentially, I'm just going to have it kind of fly away haphazardly because uh, I don't really know how to make it follow the dunes. But let's say it ends up here. And when it does, kind of twist around and comes down to a landing. So that's just kind of the end of, yeah. I, th I think that's right. Um, I didn't want it to rotate that whole time, so I'm going to copy this rotation. There we go. Perfect. All right, so that should be the animation. And it should only happen when it's clicked. So let's go back to this and change this to the cough 3. I believe that's what I called it accidentally. Cough 3. So it's going to play that when I click it. And it's going to play um, some dialogue, too, that I made, if I did it right. So let's play. All right. We're in the world. 
This is our home that we're just coming out of here. And I'm just gonna head towards the city. Oops, I just hit an invisible wall that I didn't intend to. Super glitched out. Very, very early stages of this game. Let's see if I can find this thing that I dropped in here. Oh, there they are. Does it work? There we go. <laughs> I would probably change the speed of it and all of that. It's a little strange, but I kind of like it. Yeah, and I would kind of make it start going away right at the end of the dialogue and move away faster because it's going so slow <laughs> and so strangely. <laughs> but uh, I just kind of did it on a whim without knowing um, anything about the timing of it. And, uh, but it seemed to work at least. I'm just gonna continue on to this city to show you a bit of it. I'll show you another example of actually one of these that works better. So here's another hidden object. When you hover over it, it changes color. Add it to home, thermofluidic generator. Commencing home installation. So now that thing traveled back to your house and it's part of a machine matrix that makes a warp drive. You just have to find all the pieces and you'll be able to uh, experience what happens at the end. There are all, all of these uh, glass slides that kind of you can traverse through the world um, if you find the entrances and like this one. Good timing because the sun's coming up, so this is gonna look good. I believe you have to crouch under this. Okay, so yeah, we're on this glass slide here, going up. It goes all the way out to the desert there. I'm not really sure of the purpose of these, except for just experiencing good views and getting up to some spaces that you wouldn't normally rationally get up to. Um, and just the visual effect of these glass slides that are wrapping around these, uh, this architecture is just something I've envisioned for a while. And uh, what I also want to do in this area, in this city world, is make some paths. Like right now, it's pretty just open land, very nature-like, but it'd be cool to have a little path that goes through here with um, some of these lamps, um, kind of like guiding the way uh, through the path. But uh, for now, I'm yeah, that's probably what I'll do next, honestly, but, but yeah, so that is what where I'm at with this. Um, Maybe right now I'll change the animation so that it's a little closer to what I want. So I'll just like kind of make this end, it needs to end later. And, uh, and then it needs to travel faster at the end as well. So I'm just gonna kind of move these so that they're a little bit slower essentially. Probably an easier way to do all of this. I'm sure somebody can illuminate that to me. Um, but I just kind of found my own hacky way of doing things. Um, so I'll kind of make that zoom off a little faster, maybe. Cool. So let's test that now. I hit the same. See, these are some invisible paths that I made to uh, traverse around, but I probably didn't put them in a very good spot. Um, 
Again, this is just a kind of impressionistic fun project with no expectations. There we go. So this is ultimately going to be a quest where you can find another one of these uh, robed beings, have a conversation, find Zaro Eishnu again, and then uh, receive a hidden item that will lead you to find one of the clues one of the objects. Okay, it's still going away a little too slow for some reason, but it's still kind of funny. I, I'm kind of into it. <laughs> you know, ultimately I would make it kind of walk on the dunes, but I just don't know how to, it would take a, I could make it animate to do that, but it seems like it would be a lot of work. So it really goes away fast, huh? Yeah. Um, while I'm out here, I'll show you couple places um in the distance if you can see that little spiral building really far that's another city that's really far away it probably takes like f i don't know five in game real time minutes to get there um it's pretty far but i, I haven't really built it out yet to be organized so it's just kind of like a bunch of stuff all over the place there not very well built but this is the cave the first destination I built. That's your home right there. And there are, there's all these uh, kind of white stars to guide you of locations of where to go. So in this cave is this object. And it's the first one that most people f I will find. And uh, I kind of made this cave just to see this view of the sun rising. Um, and of the city in the distance as well kind of like the misty fogginess of everything of the scene. And in every area, there are these hidden glass paths that take you up to uh, just other places that have weird objects and sculptures and some of the more hidden objects to unlock. So this is just this... Uh, atrium of some kind, or some, I don't even know what to call it, um, some kind of glass um, thing. But uh, yeah, so all the music is uh, dependent on the area that you're in, kind of changes the soundtrack, like most games would. Um, this is another spot that has a hidden object, this little oasis here. I like the shadows on it when the sun is setting here. It looks pretty cool. This is the hidden object that I've put here. Not exactly sure what I meant by this, except for that I just wanted to make it more poetic and have it make sense later. Um, just, just rarely are interactive experiences absurdly poetic. They always have to make sense. Um, yeah, so these objects have appeared in my house. I still have to kind of put things in these rooms, interesting things. Really, this is a very early state, even though I've been working on this slowly for a year, not really spending that much time on it, um, really at all, just kind of whenever I'm free. And it's very attainable to do it. Um, I didn't have to code a single thing. I just kind of um, just combined a bunch of existing scripts and asked for help. And some people helped and gave me a script that will that made this on mouse down command that it can copy and paste for almost any function and kind of create interactive narrative elements to the story and to the world very easily um it's kind of a weird way of doing it i think there's logs you're supposed to use logs and animation overrides and you know node-based uh, animations and all of that but you could do all of this without any of that knowledge you just kind of make it work for yourself um it's all possible. Um, 
Now, this is a very disorganized scene, but um, but there's a lot there's a lot of objects, there's a lot going on here. It's very unoptimized. Um, the frame rate's terrible, but it doesn't need to be for me to uh, be happy. I think uh, I'm happy that it just that I can even just make it exist, really. And um, this is one other zone that you can find. It has its own sound kind of emanating from it. And it's just kind of, it's just kind of fun to, you know, drag and drop these open source objects in here and use them to make this huge world that can really be spent some time in exploring um, and have it be a calming, serene experience instead of it, you know, just having other emotions attached to it, which usually are associated with most games. Um, and there's no, you know, it's very open. There's no walls and there's no intentional invisible walls whatsoever in the entire game. It's completely open. So um, yeah, but this is what I'm working on and I uh, hope you enjoy it. <laughs>